Ah, it's my name. Hey everybody, how's it going? Ryan Cardinal here, the Ryan Cardinal, the creative native. And I got a little bit of a tutorial today on something that I've been kind of like sitting on for a while. And now I can show you what I have here. So if you ever wanted to use screen tones, traditional screen tones like I have here, this is for doing like manga, black and white, adding in shading, gradients, all that kind of stuff. You know, as well as I do, that these are very expensive to buy online. I think they're anywhere from $20 up to $40, depending on the package that you get. And in that package, you only get four sheets of screen tone. And if you're doing any kind of project, say that you're making your own manga, doing traditional artwork, that's going to add up super quick. Now, uh, this stuff is totally awesome. It is worth buying. Uh, I got these because I wanted to see exactly how it was because I haven't touched any of this stuff since I was like a kid. Um, but in doing so, I also came into the problem of, uh, yeah, if I want to do more with this, it's going to be very expensive. So I found a way to do your own DIY screen tones, and I'm going to walk you through the process of what you need and how to do that. So let's get started. Let's move these out of the way. And I'm going to pull out the materials that we're going to be using. Now, namely... You're going to need something to print on, and you're going to need a printer. The printer that I suggest is any kind of laser printer, laser printer, that prints fast. And you're also going to need this stuff right here. Uh, clear, matte, transparent, contact tape. And I believe you can find this virtually anywhere. Home Depot, uh, any, any kind of place that has like drawer liners, you're going to have this. And it's a, a, a lot of material for a very little amount. I think this is, uh, let me see, I think that this was like maybe eight or nine bucks for all of this. And the amount of screen tones you can get out of this is a lot. Uh, the other thing that you're gonna need, obviously, is either like Photoshop or Clip Studio Paint to get screen tones, but we'll cut to that in a second. But you're gonna need this, you're gonna need some tape, you're gonna need some scissors, and this is a workable fixative. This is from Krylon. You can get this at any art store, Michael's, uh, any place that has any kind of art supplies, you're going to be able to get this. And uh, I'll, I'll show you what this is for later on. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to take this, roll it out into uh, preferably just like standard, oh, get back in the there, standard sheet paper size. And so you want to cut this out so it's the exact same size as this. And when you do that, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to tape these together. Pull this off to the side right now. All right. So you're going to want to uh, tape these together with the masking tape, uh, preferably more on the paper side than on the plastic side. You want to have the clear plastic side. This is what you're going to be printing onto, not on this side. Now, the reason for this is that this is the face that is going to be accepting uh, the image of whatever it is that you're going to be using for your screen tone. And you don't want to have uh, too much tape on this uh, because this has to go through the laser printer and that heats up. And if any of that adhesive gets into your system, it most likely will screw up your printer. So uh, fair warning. Do this at your own risk. There is a very, very good chance that you could mess up your laser printer. And if you're okay with that, take the risk. Now, one of the other reasons that I tape this to this rather than just using this is because there is adhesive on uh, the plastic sheet. And there is a chance that that could fuse to the fuser as it's rolling through and imprinting the image onto this. With the piece of paper in the back, it kind of disperses the heat a little bit easier uh, and doesn't transfer directly uh, just into the plastic here. And uh, also, the adhesive that is on here, that might also press out to the sides just a little bit, uh, and that might screw up your printer as well. Again, at your own risk. Uh, <laughs> now, a couple tricks that I'm going to suggest uh, if you are doing this with a laser printer, because that's the only way you're going to be able to do it is do it with a printer that runs fast. Uh, my printer is a brother, uh, I'll, I'll just pop it in here. There it is. Um, and it prints, I, I think, at either 32 or 36 pages per minute. So it, it cycles through really, really quick. Uh, another thing is, I'm gonna run you through this as I go to set up the printing, is you wanna set it up on the way that uh, this sheet goes through the printer as fast as possible. 
Now, the Brother printer has a setting called Thin Paper, and I found that that is uh, the setting that will rip the paper through the printer as fast as possible without scorching anything. So, uh, once you have this cutout set up just like this, you know, uh, we're going to go over to the printer and I'm going to show you how to do that. And uh, yeah, let's go do that right now. So yeah, this is uh, my brother printer that I have. Sorry about the change in the audio. This is just coming directly from uh, the camera. Uh, this is uh, the working model that I have, just as I showed earlier. And what we're going to do is we're just going to pop this into here. I have the back open. That's what that is right there. And then that way it goes through the printer. It doesn't have to come and curl around. It just goes straight through. Uh, again, leading to any uh, potential issues. Uh, try to mitigate those. And we should hear it rev up. Click and it should grab. There it is. All right, cool. And now we are ready to get back and set up the stuff on Clip Studio Paint so we can print on here. So let's go do that. All right, here we are in Clip Studio Paint. And now what we're going to do is just open up a new file new uh just gonna make this uh, i have just a, a letter preset so eight and a half by 11 i have this at 300 dpi so that should be good enough for printing just gonna press ok and uh what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna put in a uh let's just say like a, a gradient of some kind so let's go in here i'm just gonna do this gradient where are we paint bucket Oh, there it is. Gradient, foreground of transparency, black. I'm just going to pull this from the top to the bottom. So we got a gradient, and then I'm just going to apply uh, the gradient feature right here. And if we zoom in, we now have a nice fine uh, gradient. Now we can adjust that as we want over here. So if we want it to be a bit more coarse, uh, when it prints out. Now, bear in mind too, the banding that you see on here uh, on the screen, that is a moray pattern that happens uh, on the screen, but it won't come out in the printing. So let's just do that. Now, uh, let me see here. I'm going to go to File, Print. Let's see. And yeah, pick brother. That's the one that I got. I'm going to go to properties and I'm going to adjust my properties here. Uh, portrait. Yep. Plain paper. Uh, thin paper. There it is. And I'm just going to put this at 300 DPI. Graphics. Uh, multi page normal, two sided, auto select. All right. Okay. And that should be good to go. So I'm just going to press print here and away we go. Boom. There we go. Let's go take a look at that. All right. So here is the printout. Let's see if we can get up close here. It's uh, tough to tell because uh, we have the backing layer on this, but uh, it is a nice gradient of that tone. All right. Um, now, one of the things I'm going to go up to one of the dark layers here. Uh, one of the cool things that you can do with uh, the traditional uh, screen tones is that you can scratch away the screen tone. And uh, yeah, this is this is no different. So. Let's see, let's try and come up here. So you can get the, the exact same effect as you as you can with traditional screen tone by uh, scratching in effects. So if you have a you know character around and you want to uh, you know erase out some of the spots, you can just scratch it away. Now you can use whatever you want to scratch, but one of the problems that I found with this is it has it has a tendency to rub away uh, a little too easy. Uh, the original screen tone, you, you really got to actually get in there to scrape it away. So that's where, uh, this stuff comes in. And what I like to do is just give, uh, this just a quick spray 
of the workable fixative. And what it does is that this will kind of lock this in, uh, but doesn't make it inaccessible when you want to get that scratchy effect. So uh, I'm going to go spray this on this, let that dry, and come back and we'll see how much of a difference that makes in, in the scratching. So I'm going to go do that right. All right, and we are back here. So here is uh, the piece of uh, DIY screen tone that we made. Uh, this is now with the fixative on top of it. So let me just zoom in here and we can kind of see, uh, let's see, there we go. Bam, so we got nice gradient going. We can see that all the way across. And then we'll just get to this part up here. There it is. So this is the scratch that we had before. Uh, without any of the fixative on top of it. Now I'm just going to scratch next to it, applying the same amount of pressure, and we're going to see uh, just how much of a difference that there is. And it actually does require uh, a little bit more to get that tone off. Um, yeah, it just adds like a little, little extra, a little bit of effort so it's not smudging and smearing as much. Uh, without it, I, I find that if you're if you're working in an area and you got your palm, let me zoom back out here. Sorry about that. Do that. All right. Uh, so I notice that if you're if you're working with it and you got your palm on there uh, without the uh, fixative on top of it, it has a tendency to smudge and smear off a little bit easier. But with a quick blast of the fixative, uh, it holds holds it holds much better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, this sheet. And I printed out a page from my comic book, Caius, A Story of Blood and Stone. And I'm just going to do some of the screen tones on here. So I'm just going to videotape this and then we'll do a quick time lapse and we kind of see how all that works out. All right, so let's uh, hop into that. And here is the uh, kind of like quick finished product. Uh, just put this together and uh, yeah, it's turned out uh, not too bad for traditional style uh, DIY screen tone. Now, uh, as you saw, I had like this old big X-Acto. Uh, if I had a proper small X-Acto, I'd be able to like uh, cut in there a little bit quicker, but uh, yeah, for the most part, now, it worked out pretty good. Now, the only thing with this is I don't really know how long the longevity of this would last. I don't know how long uh, the the tackiness and stickiness uh, the adhesive has onto the paper. Those are things I don't know about. But if you're looking for an option to have yourself screen tones and you don't want to blow your money on the original stuff, uh, this is the way that I go about doing it. I hope that I covered everything that I meant to cover. If not, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. And yeah, uh, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. And I should be having a couple more tutorials and videos coming out very soon. And thank you everybody for coming by and checking this out. And I hope this is of some use to you. Peace out.